Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I apologize for recently using different narrators in my videos. This is because the narrator I usually use has become difficult to access. Whenever I find a suitable replacement, I always encounter minor shortcomings with that narrator. So, in essence, I ask for forgiveness for this issue. Hopefully, things will improve in the future. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Where has our social security gone? The net balance in the fund stands at a staggering $2,699,365,000,000. In fiscal year 2023, total collections amounted to $2,735,301,000,000, while disbursements reached $1,433,349,000,000. What makes this noteworthy? The Social Security Administration does not consider payments into Social Security as a loan or debt that earns interest and is payable to taxpayers. The Big Lie Our government is claiming that Social Security is, in fact, a tax and accounting for it on that basis. Technically, they should be stewards of money on loan, and instead they are making a profit, a staggering $1,301,952,000,000. All taxpayer funds, excluding operating administrative costs, are invested in non-marketable treasuries. The interest on these federal treasuries rivals that of a certificate of deposit, at 3.5%. According to a footnote to the financials, accounts receivable from the public, consists of monies due to the SSA and to beneficiaries in excess of their entitlement, as well as amounts due from the states to cover underpayments to the recipients. In addition, upward of $500 billion of COVID loans that were canceled were written off against Social Security. Of this amount, the Small Business Administration estimates that $200 billion in forgiven Paycheck Protection Program loans were granted fraudulently, a staggering 40%. How lovely! Now, consider this. If you had invested $100 in the S&P 500 index in 1980, treating it as savings, it would now be worth an impressive $12,097.47, with an average annual return of 11.61%. Essentially, the government benefits from the difference in value, a whopping 8.11%. While they play with the gains, you're left with the debt. And let's not forget the cost incurred by the government to administer your annual loss. In the real world, such mismanagement of funds would likely lead to a lawsuit. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. Last year, the Social Security Administration determined that inflation was 3%, therefore your benefit payment rose by just 3%. This is the data released to support the current rate of 3.8%, food, up 5.5%, shelter, up 5.7%, vehicle insurance, up 20.6%, medical, up 1.4%, recreation, up 2.1%, electricity, up 3.6%, utility costs, down 8.2%, gasoline, down 3.9%, fuel oil, down 5.4%, and personal care up 4.2%. So, net up 22.3%. Common Core Math Funky numbers and faulty algorithms are costing Social Security recipients billions annually. We are being cheated in one of the largest Ponzi scams in history. And our esteemed Congress wants to raise the age of retirement for benefits while maintaining federal pensions. Under FERS, an employee who meets one of the following age and service requirements is entitled to an immediate retirement benefit, 
age 62 with 5 years of service, 60 with 20, minimum retirement age. The federal government does not just pay pensions for federal employees, it also pays for civilian employees, as in every single NGO. Congress is asking for an 8.7% pay raise. Federal salaries have risen at double the pace of private employees since 2000. Their inflation cost of living increases have been as much as 80% greater than Social Security. Yet the age of retirement can be as low as 50 with partial benefits and 60 with full benefits. There is no discussion of aligning this with Social Security beneficiaries or matching cost of living increases. Not to mention insider trading access. It is illegal for a private person to act on insider knowledge. However, Congress is immune from this law. Any revisions to pay, pay increases, cost of living increases, trade restrictions is off the table. While these same people tell the peasants to tighten their buckle. And penalize the Martha Stewarts of the U.S. to set an example after she cashed in and made a whopping $15,000 profit. The first means for making insider trading legal is a quirk, if the information is no material. The second means is the very definition, the company's officers, directors, certain employees, certain consultants and certain stockholders, and their family members, are considered insiders. Despite politicians having access to full-scale insider information, they are not considered insiders. Nancy Pelosi entered politics in 1987. At the time, her net worth was $33.5 million. Today that net worth has ballooned to $250 million on insider trading. In 2018 when AOC entered politics, her net worth was about $8,500. Today, her net worth is estimated to be between $13 million and $29 million on insider trading. In 1995, the net cost of illegal immigrants was considered to be roughly $12 billion. Today, housing alone for illegals is expected to reach $450 billion. Other costs including incarceration, food stamps, education, medical care, etc., can add another $200 to $300 billion annually. Ukraine was just given $300 million in grant money, better known as monopoly money, to buy American weapons. This is the same grant or aid exchange that the U.S. uses with Israel to launder funds. Aid funding is on the books at over $200 billion for last year. Welfare now costs the taxpayers $1.1 trillion, 25% of the budget. Social security isn't broke. Our irresponsible, negligent, corrupt government is. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.